Welcome to the Messy Mind Podcast, a listening experience where we provide you with valuable insight, knowledge, and experience to engage, inspire, and empower with your host, Tammy L. Davis. In this episode, I was blessed to speak with Arlen Hamilton, founder and managing partner of Backstage Capital and author of It's About Damn Time which is scheduled to be released May 5th, but you can pre-order the book now, actually. Backstage Capital is a venture capital firm who has, to date, invested over $7 million in more than 120 companies led by underrepresented founders and CEOs. Arlen is someone who I greatly admire and serves as an amazing example of grit, determination, and of course, inspiration for me and so many others. I was selected to be on her book launch team, and when the opportunity came for podcast hosts to interview her, I jumped at the chance. Listen in as we discuss Arlen's background, her journey, golden nuggets of knowledge, wisdom contained in the book, and what we as entrepreneurs can do now, even in our current state of affairs. So do we, so do we still have, we still have enough time? I'm not yes. answering what's, okay, okay. Let's go great. ahead. Yes. Okay, perfect. So today really is a manifestation of hope and a dream. So I'm joined by someone special today, and I'm going to introduce this person. But in March of 2019, I saluted this amazing woman in my blog post, celebrating phenomenal women who I greatly admired. So in that post, I stated I would meet her, I would give her a hug, well, a fist pump, and thank her for her amazing contributions. Um, Since then, I follow her on Twitter. I discovered she and her company, Backstage Capital, they were having a tour, and one of their stops was in Washington, D.C. So, of course, I immediately purchased my tickets, um, and then I was selected to be a part of the book launch team, and right there, I just about lost it. So now I have the pleasure and honor of actually speaking with Arlen Hamilton, founder and managing partner of Backstage Capital and author of It's About Time, It's About Damn Time, which will be released on May 5th. So Arlen, thank you so much for joining me today on the Messy Mind podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate all of your support and enthusiasm and help with the launch team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Really, my pleasure, my honor. And I know in the introduction, I focused on your title at Backstage Capital um, and how you are an author. However, I want to completely acknowledge that there are so many other aspects of your life that I could have highlighted, including a podcast host, a blog writer, magazine founder. Yet today, I really want to focus on author. So for me, the book, It's About Damn Time, is a testimony, a manifesto, a roadmap, if you will, for anyone who wants to achieve their vision and how you can not only achieve it, but really build upon it and watch your vision vision explode to your wildest dreams. So as I stated earlier, with all the different aspects of your life, Um, Again, your podcast named Your First Million, along with the numerous media outlets, publications, speaking engagements, your reach, in my opinion, is wide and already impactful. So why a book? Well, it kind of answers its own question because there is so much to know about what I do and so so many lanes and different Mm -hmm. ways that I manifest what I do. I -hmm. wanted a place where you could at an accessible amount you know Mm. I wanted you to be able to to know it all up until this point in my life I wanted people to be able to reference uh so many of the the thoughts that I have and the Mm. ways that I've executed on those thoughts so that they didn't have to necessarily go everywhere to figure out what I was thinking about something at a particular time now Mm. it can either be um an all-encompassing place where you can reference or it can Mm -hmm. be a jumping off spot it can be okay I like this about about me and this this and that I'm gonna Mm -hmm. go and check out the I'll check out the the investment fund I'll go check out Mm -hmm. that podcast she does so I just really wanted it to be a one-stop shop 
that again was accessible because you can do that in a lot of ways, but a book mm-hmm. to me, uh, the price point is accessible. Mm-hmm. Um, even for people who uh, are broke, like I was for so mm-hmm. many of my years for 90% mm-hmm. of my life, mm-hmm. um, I would have, sometimes I'd have a hard time buying a book because I couldn't afford it or I had to make a decision. Do I, do I eat or do I get the book? And mm-hmm. so even then what I would do is, is, uh, you know, at that point would go to libraries or go to bookstores. And I know we can't do that in this moment, but then mm-hmm. to have it available for even less money as an, e- as an audio book or, or as an ebook, you know, I just think it's a very accessible medium for reaching scale and reaching as many people as I want to. Mm-hmm. And that, and that really does make perfect sense. You know, I was speaking to my father earlier today. I asked him to lift me in prayer. Let's now again be in <laughs> prayer, joint hands virtually, that is. Yes. But one of the things, one of the goals of my father, he also wants to write his own book. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would say that th- th- this is a two-part question. So first, what are some of the things that you discovered about yourself in writing the book? And part two is, what do you wish you would have known when you first started to write? Um, I just realized after seeing everything all in one place and reading it, I've read it so many times throughout the editing process and building Mm. it and everything. I just realized how much has been accomplished in the last just five years alone. And and Mm. when you're in it, when your head's down in it and you're working every day and it's you're building something bit by bit and every every mistake and, and falter and every every little crack in the armor is is part of your day to day it is hard to put all the pieces together and sum it up. Uh, Mm -hmm. But that the book really helped me kind of feel that pride and, and say, you know, I did something. I really set out to do something and I did it. And I'm Mm -hmm. so glad that I was able to, to package it in a way that people can understand and share with me on that journey. Mm -hmm. Um, What I wish I had known before I wrote it. Is that what you said? Correct. What I wish I had known before I wrote it. Um, I guess part of it is that you, it's hard to really figure out. I think the hardest part of writing a book is the organizing of, of what goes in it Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the order it goes in. Hmm. And I know that, I mean, for me, that's what it was. That may be super easy for other people. I have a friend actually, Laura, who wrote a book called Edge. And she Mm -hmm. said she wrote like 20,000 extra words that they had to cut because she has so Mm -hmm. much information, you know, like she had too much uh, to put in there. But for Mm -hmm. me, it was more like there is, there are all these different experiences to pull from Mm -hmm. and all sorts of things I want to get across to people. How do you put that in a, in a, in an order that makes sense and comes together? And that's where my co-writer was really helpful. Rachel, uh, Mm -hmm. she's mentioned on the cover. She, she didn't write the content of it so much as help me organize and kind of reflect to me what people might get from it you know and so that was just so uh and she made it she made it um in some places where I needed it she made it a a richer uh texture Mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that that's really going to not only help my father in his journey but others as well of course Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we love to do on a Friday as a family is watch, of course, Shark Tank. Yes. And one episode that resonated with me was there was a woman who was pitching. I don't even remember what she was pitching, but she was doing a horrible job. Mm -hmm. I felt for her because I say that I'm a functioning introvert. Um, I think I think to speak. As, a, as opposed to the other way around, let's say an extrovert. Hmm. So she was going through this pitch and she was just, she was just horrible. And again, I felt for her and Mark stops her and interrupts her and basically acknowledged that she's doing a bad job. And she gives a reason as to why she is, because she's an introvert and she's never done this before and she's extremely nervous. And Mark had asked her, is your back against the wall enough to push through your issues? Mm-hmm. What was your back against the wall moment, if you had one? Um, well, hmm, I, I love that setup. I'm trying to think about exactly. Do you mean for me personally to get through? I, I guess I would need a little bit more uh, pinpointing because, mm-hmm. yes, I would say, I mean, I, I would say, did you ever have a moment as you were going through? like you said, you read through many versions of the book as you were editing 
Did you ever have a point where you were reading it and you said to yourself, you know what, I don't think I should put this in or I I'm nervous to tell this piece mm. or and you just, you know, push through and mm. said, you know, I'm going to do it anyway. And not only for the book, I'm going to say for your for your for your experiences in your life as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think more so the book itself. I, I, lo I really loved the process. It was uh, mm -hmm. a very challenging process and I had to you I had to use tools that I hadn't had to use in a while and mm. that entrepreneurship is you know able to come through now and in the the promotion of the book and all that I just feel that it's that, that takes me back to my roots in a really mm -hmm. cool way so it's not so much that but probably you know there are definitely a couple of really important um, inflection points in building the fund itself building backstage mm -hmm. which the book mm. is mostly about mm -hmm. and and it was kind of juggling the personal with the professional. It mm -hmm. was, I was broke. I had no money. Mm -hmm. A lot of times I had no place to live. There was housing insecurity, to say the least. I was on food stamps mm -hmm. for a great deal of it. There was a lot going on, right? And I had to figure out how not to let all of that seep into the bigger picture and where mm -hmm. Mark was saying, you know, Mark and I are friends now and we, we um, mm -hmm. we're friendly. I should say, I don't want to speak for him, but we're friendly and mm -hmm. we uh, work, work together on a fund. And, and, you know, I can see where he was saying that. Um, I think that many, I think by the time I reached him, I had, <laughs> I had already had that word with myself where <laughs> it's like, you know, because we go through so much as a, as mm -hmm. a, as a group of, uh, you know, anybody who's under considers themselves underestimated, as we call it. Mm -hmm. um, I think there have been times where we have to, where we've seen and I've seen. I don't know if it's back against the wall, but it's it's mm -hmm. where it's where like your character is made mm -hmm. is really shown. And so I've had met mo a lot of those moments and some of that was about pride. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't if I you don't have some place to live. You know, I remember going back to live with my family in Mississippi and in Louisiana mm. in my, I would have been in my thirties, you know, I'll mm. be 40 this year. So I would have been in my early thirties when this, when mm -hmm. that happened, mid thirties, um, having to sleep on people's couches and, and watching their kids go by and the kids are kind of like, why are you here? Are you an adult? Like, why are you sleeping? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Those types of mm -hmm. moments, uh, I think, mm -hmm. you know, you really kind of say, what do I, what do I really want? Is this what hmm. I, is this going to be okay? Is this going to be okay for me for years? And, and that, I had many times where I said, no, every day I said, no, this is not okay. What's okay is that I, that I turn this around somehow. Hmm. That's incredible. And, and one thing I had noted, you know, as well, and I, I know that I've highlighted so much of the book that you can see more yellow, pink, and blue than you can actually white. <laughs> <laughs> and I can say, I mean, it's crazy. When I was like, how are you even reading anything? I'm like, I know, I know it's in my head. I want to, I want to, I want to refer back to it. I want to go back to it. And one of the things I noticed that I was constantly going back to were the angels that have been surrounded, let's say in your life and have guided you on your journey. So from Susan to Sam, to Jack, to Chris, to Jeff, and for those who want to know all those people who all those people are you get to read the book mm -hmm. um however because you were supported by so many people were they also a driving force for you to succeed and pay it forward sure i, I have an entire section or entire chapter that says that there's no such thing as self-made mm -hmm. and i i definitely believe that and and those mm -hmm. the names that you gave or have been part of my journey the last five or six years and mm -hmm. there are multitude of people before that and all of them uh are are make me make up who I am and and mm -hmm. you know and and so I I try to be very aware of of any any help that I was given because a lot of times we can think about it and say well we weren't no one's helping no one's doing mm -hmm. you know I'm out here why am I like some people have reached out to me who are friends and said, why were you homeless when you knew I was here? Why, why was that the case? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, per, on a personal level, I just, I felt like I had really gone back to the well too many times. And, and you, yeah. it's hard to, it's hard to kind of ask over and over again for help like that. But if you really mm -hmm. break it down, a lot of times people who think 
that they're not getting any help from anybody or there's they're on their own they're alone there really are people who do care Mm -hmm. and they may not know what you're going through or they may not be able to help in a way that's immediate but you can think back to I think anybody can think back to at least one time one person helped them in the Mm -hmm. last year let's call it that even if it was small and you start there and you build upon that. And that starts to get you into that gratitude mindset where mm-hmm. things aren't as half empty. You know, it's mm-hmm. more like, wow, wait a second. OK. And then you start opening yourself up to more help. And when you open yourself mm-hmm. up to more help, that's when opportunities show up. I would totally agree with that for sure. And I would say that, I mean, of course, I'm an entrepreneur. I've had my own consulting, you know, business for many years now. And because I am, I'm a part of a community. Entrepreneurs tend to stick together. And one of the things I always tell my fellow entrepreneurs is that you may not have wanted to come for me for money, but there's different aspects of support. Mm -hmm. Did you want to bounce an idea off of me? Mm -hmm. Or did you want to float an email my way? Or did you just want me to be a listening ear for whatever you may be going through? Did you want to have an event session? Whatever. Did you want me to watch your daughter or your son? I mean, many different aspects. And I think sometimes people get locked on to it has to be a financial contribution in some way, Mm -hmm. as opposed to it just being your heart and your mind to be connected with that person and support them. Right. So that's, that, that's such a, an excellent point. So, so I, I'm going to shift a, a little bit, given our current state of affairs, that's how I like to frame it. Now the world that we're living in, um, what have you done or what are you doing? If anything differently in selecting and or investing in founders? So we are, we were going to invest in a company in each city of our tour that you mentioned that I know you bought a Mm. ticket to in DC. So appreciate Mm -hmm. that. Well, of course we had to cancel the in-person and then postpone any kind of virtual. So we were, we were heavily affected by, by financially, by everything that happened. What, what we hope to do and the plan internally is to go back uh, second half of this year of 2020 and start, uh, investing again and, and what we're used to doing at backstage for the past four years prior has been we invest in between 24 and 32 companies per year at at least 25,000 up to 100,000 each so we're used to that pace and uh, mm. to have zero so far is very odd to us mm-hmm. um, but we're gonna we're gonna just do what we can I think what we're doing in the meantime is just really doubling down on the resource side of things the service mm-hmm. side of things so we have Uh, office hours that we've been holding for a couple of weeks now and and we'll continue Mm -hmm. to uh, with any founder who is interested in being uh, a part of our uh, being looked at by backstage and really providing Mm -hmm. actionable helpful resources on that call Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a small group setting and it's based on what's what um, where you are in in the Mm -hmm. in the journey um, mm-hmm. so we, not everybody's all grouped together who is just starting out or has raised 5 million. It's a kind of based on where you are stage wise. And so those have been incredibly successful and helpful. Uh, we'll continue to do that. You can go to backstagecapital.com and look up office hours in the application section, uh, to sign up for that. And, and then on top of that, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep working on your company, keep working on your customer. Think about your customer first and foremost, um, and as long as you do that, you know, we mm-hmm. and others will be around and and um, and eventually this will get back to normal, if not better. Thank you for for adding that, because that was going to be my my last question. Is there any parting advice you'd like to offer or share? Because, of course, this platform, The Messy Mind, it's all about and for entrepreneurs. Mm. So for them listening in, I, I love that little tidbit. Is there anything else you would like to share? Offer? Yeah, I would say, you know make a plan you have a you have more in control that you have more control of things than you may think and that Mm -hmm. doesn't matter it doesn't matter if you are have a company or if you're working nine to five etc etc you have more control of your life your destiny your day-to-day and your future than you may think today and that goes for Mm -hmm. everybody successful not everywhere in between um, you could always recalibrate and, and reconstruct what what's going to happen next. And mm-hmm. so I, my, my advice would be to, to 
you know, this weekend or whatever, whenever you're listening to this, whenever you get a chance, take an hour, take a couple and just sort of start writing out your goals, where you are, where you want to be like, you know, put them on paper, put, you know, old fashioned mm-hmm. paper, <laughs> where you are today, mm-hmm. where you want to be. Um, start thinking about that as a fundamental thing. I know it sounds so simple, but I, I don't know how many people do it. How many people really do right. that and right. start there. And know that you have more control. And, and I would say pick up the book. Uh, it's about damn time mm-hmm. at it's about damn time dot com. I have so much more mm-hmm. to, to share with you in that book. And it's mm-hmm. really my way, again, of, of being accessible. And I, I want you to I want you to get way more out of it than than the retail price. So I'll put it like that. Well, I'm going to tell you, like I said, it's my roadmap. It's my manifesto. It's a testimony um, to all the things that can happen and what you want to achieve. So I know it's mine. I know it will be others as well. And I'm going to say from the bottom of my heart, Arlen, thank you so much for joining me today on The Messy Mind. This has been incredible. Um, I'm still having a pinch me moment, (laughs) Um, but I really appreciate you and all that you are doing and continue to do. And of course, where can our listeners find you? If you go to itsaboutdamntime.com, that's where you can find my podcast, the book, and all sorts of things that'll lead you right to me. Well, thank you again. Again, it's it's been incredible. Thank you. And uh, continue to stay healthy, keep safe. And I'm so excited for you in the book. It's going to surpass your wildest dreams. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate that. Thank you for joining us this time on the Messy Mind podcast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll never miss an episode. If you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate a rating on iTunes or your listening platform, or if you simply tell a friend about the show. We appreciate being a part of your day and remember to embrace your messy mind.